YouTubers. I want to have a look today at Christian mission, missionaries um, from times gone by, what they've been up to. They've been spreading morals of Christianity. And I want to look at these morals because we're often reminded of them by Christians. Now, in particular, I'm going to have a look at the uh, island of Tahiti, the, the Polynesian sort of island of Tahiti. Now, when the early discoverers found Tahiti, it was described as the Garden of Eden. It was paradise on earth. And Captain Cook, one of the one of the early, not the first, but one of the earliest people to actually spend some time there, he discovered a people warm, welcoming, loving. They really lived in a society which um, we see in chimpanzees, not so much the chimpanzees, but the bonobos, which were once thought of as pygmy chimpanzees. Now, they've built up a society in a similar way, based on sex and based on love, um, rather than on domination. And a similar type of society had um, evolved, as it were, in this area of Tahiti. They weren't warlike. And, in fact, Captain Cook said of the people, um, the worst thing to have happened to them is the fact that they had been discovered by Europeans. And, no doubt, Christianity, <laughs> as we will see later. Now, later on, Captain Bly, the famous Captain Bly on the Bounty, uh, the ship the Bounty, the mutiny on the Bounty being a very famous documented um, thing. Now, he had the same problem, of course. Now, when his sailors went there, they loved it so much they didn't want to go home. People often think it was Captain Bly, the nasty Captain Bly, and the, um, it was a very harsh life in those days in the Royal Navy. And when these sailors um, arrived there, it's, they didn't want to leave. And that was really the cause of the mutiny more than the evil Captain Bly, which is sometimes said. He, in fact, was exonerated from any blame later on. Anyway, in 1797, <clears throat> the London Missionary Society uh, decided to send out missionaries and they first arrived there. OK, now 14 years went by and they hadn't converted anyone they were a bit peeved about this, the old London Missionary Society, because they weren't there just to convert people. They were there to make money. They, uh, that's the whole point, really. They didn't want just converts. They wanted some cash coming back, a bit of trade. And what they tried to do is introduce sugarcane to, to the natives. And the natives didn't want any of it, really. They had everything they wanted. They had a coral reef going around the island. And... They also had all the fruit on the trees that they, they desired. They didn't need to work, as it were. Um, in fact, <coughs> Mr. Uh, this particular Christian, um, Mr. Orsmond, uh, J.M. Orsmond, who was one of the missionaries, he said that a bountiful nature diminishes men's natural desire to work. What an utter bastard. I mean, I don't mean, I don't, I'm no insult to bastards, just in the sense of the word bastard. I mean, these people were having a perfectly nice time. What had happened is the Christians that were there, they'd been given housing, they'd been given free food, free housing and free servants. And for this, you know, they, they didn't want to really introduce another God when they were already being portrayed as gods. So you can understand the missionary's point of view. <clears throat> However, they did have an influence on a local chief for in an area they settled. And what they decided to do, and we have this documented from the letters of J.M. Osmond, is they decided to introduce alcohol. Now, it seems bizarre, but alcohol he did indeed introduce to this local chief. His name was Pomare. Okay. Now, once they got him hooked on alcohol, they had God on their side. So, uh, 
And they, that wasn't enough, obviously. They needed him to go out and conquer the other chiefs. Uh, they needed to start a war. They needed, they knew they weren't going to do anything by just being nice. So they give, believe it or not, this guy and his little posse of Christian soldiers, they give him firearms and swords. And they said to them, go out there and if nobody will convert, then you must kill them. And indeed, this is what happened. Um, this little reign of terror followed where non-believers were killed. It was then declared illegal by Christians for anyone to decorate themselves with flowers. Believe it or not, they were not allowed to sing anything except hymns. Right? They were not allowed to go into the surf and they were not allowed to dance. They had to cover up their bodies. And uh, within 25 years of these people turning up, they had, uh, with a, bearing in mind the first 14 years they did nothing, they had managed to totally extinguish that local culture. Bastards. Anyway, um, there was other things as well. They decided to chop down the breadfruit trees. Why? Because they could plant sugar cane. They wanted them to work. That what they wanted was slavery, basically. And uh, once this model had been achieved, and they realised how they did this, um, they actually did go onto other islands and do exactly the same thing. They used the same plan. Which is really, it's, it's just unbelievable really, isn't it? Um, now, history, it provides us with um, lessons, as it were. And history is now proving that most cultures destroyed by Christianity far outweighed in morals and dignity what they were replaced by. So it uh, makes you think, doesn't it? And uh, this, this particular island, it was reduced from 200,000 people in the 25 years that they were uh, doing this, from 200,000 to just 6,000. Okay, there was a disease about, but um, it was nowhere near as bad as the Christian missionaries. So with that thought, peace. Unbelievable bastards.